So I want to I want to go back into to your own background because you have a really interesting personal history, and you've written about how you kind of were this budding scientist at a really early age. You what set up a little science lab in the closet of your base your your bedroom? Is that right? That's right. What did you do there, and how old were you? Well, I, I started uh, doing scientific experiments probably around the age of seven or eight. Um, I made ugly stains on the carpet <laughs> that our parents couldn't clean out, and uh, I made explosions. I, I built rockets. With, well, you made explosions in your closet? Not in my closet. No, in my closet I had uh, lots of... Uh, electrical equipment, capacitors, resistors, batteries, photocells. I had um, test tubes and chemicals. Um, and uh, I didn't actually do the experiments in the, in the closet. The closet was where I kept everything. Mm, okay. Uh, but I, I loved uh, doing experiments. I loved building things. It's interesting. Uh, I think that uh, a lot of scientists have uh, uh, start off that way. When I got into college, I realized that there were other uh, science majors who were much, much better than me with their hands, and they became experimentalists. When, when I built things in, in my college labs, they, they blew up <laughs> and when they weren't supposed to. Uh, so I, you know, I'm not very good as an experimentalist at the professional level. So I retreated into mathematics and became a theoretical scientist. Did you know when, when you were doing those science experiments, I don't know, when you were 10 or 12 yeah. or whatever, did you know that you wanted to become a physicist then? No. Uh, I probably didn't know what physics was. Uh, but I, I did physics-type things like making pendulums with, with uh, weights on the end of strings and timing their periods. And uh, I knew that I was interested in science. I was interested in, in how the world works. And, and, and I got pleasure out of building things. So I didn't know that I was going to be a physicist, but I just knew that I loved uh, building things and exploring and finding out how things work. Is that the core attraction of science to you, trying to figure out how, how the world works? Yes, I think so. Um, uh, there's, there's a great emotion, emotional satisfaction in discovering something um, that, where you're the first person who found out that thing. And it, even if it's a minor thing, if you're the first person who found out this this thing about the physical world, and there's a, a truth to it, and, um, I mean, people can debate endlessly on what caused the Civil War, and and with with good arguments on all different sides, from the social, political, economic side, but when you find out something that's equivalent to the the area of a circle is pi r squared. You know, no one can deny the truth of that. And there's something very reassuring about being able to find something that you know is true. On the other hand, uh, I think that all of the, the debating the Civil War, the causes of the Civil War, and all the questions that the humanities ask that don't have answers like would we be li would we ha be happier if we lived to be a thousand years old, or is it is it moral to, to steal food to feed your family? Um, why did uh, the uh, Raskolnikov in in Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment why did he kill the old lady? That that these questions without answers are also extremely valuable, and I think that that both the questions of science, which have answers, and the questions of the arts and humanities, which don't have answers, they're all part of being human. We, we need questions with answers, and we need questions without answers.